top of the time, tea time, yeah, this is tea time, yeah, make a difference, one cup at a time, tea time, so be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz, tea time, tea time, Making a difference, one cup at a time. Tea time, yeah. Tea time, time, time. Well, good morning and welcome to Tea Time with Miss Liz. That's right. We are back for a new week with three incredible TEAs that will be joining me today. And today in this house, on this International Day of Peace, I have the incredible Rick Delarada. He is the founder and creator of Jazz for Peace. That's right. We're going to do peace this morning. And what better day to do it than on International Day of Peace? So I want you to grab your tea, grab your coffee, grab your breakfast because it's deeply important and grab your heart this morning because we're going to bring you a different flavor of tea this morning. We're going to play some jazz music. We're going to get Rick to play some music for us. And we're going to understand why Rick does what he does. So let's get the disclaimer out there, a little bit of bio, and then we're going to jump in and get Rick in here. And here's he's going to share a good, strong TEA with all of you this morning. Disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookymissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and will see you at a later date and a later date and time for another show. And all, all tea times this year are done on a Thursday, 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Unless it is a recorded, um, rescheduled show, then it is done on a Monday or Tuesday. So now a little bit on Rick Delarada. I met Rick a few months ago when we booked this tea time and I was super excited. As everyone knows, Miss Liz is a former peace ambassador for Canada. And I'm also a peace uh, envoy for the Great Britain and Ireland. And I just wanted to really promote and share peace with all of my brothers and sisters out there because we don't speak and share enough of it. So a little bit on Rick. So Rick Delarada is a jazz pianist vocalist and composer. Rick Delarada is now considered by many to be one of the finest singers and pianists performing today and one of, of only handful of jazz artists who can make a successful musical presentation to a large audience without having to abandon the true art form of jazz. Through his lifelong endeavors to help advance people to their highest potential through the understanding of jazz, 
as well as spreading peace worldwide through his Jazz for Peace World Tour. Rick Delarada is considered to be an innovator and a visionary. And if you'd like to know more about Rick, check out his uh, full bio on Ms. Liz's Facebook page, LinkedIn, and all of those good channels. So let me get Rick in here. Let me sip on some tea and let's bring you some music, jazz for peace today, and let's spread some peace and share this tea time if it resonates with you or if you know of anybody out there that would love to hear uh, some jazz music. So let me welcome Rick. Rick, welcome. Hey, Liz. Great to be here. It is an honor to have you here. As I said, when you reached out months ago, I was just like, absolutely 100%. This is the place for you to be, right? Because we need to spread peace. We need to spread love. So Rick, I want to get into, I do this with everyone. Who were you as a little boy and who are you now as a grown man? Well, I guess as a young boy, um, I was... Um kind of a product of the safety of what America was back then when we had a middle class. It was towards towards the end of the middle class, you know, era uh, when it started to just uh, slide downhill. And um, I guess now, you know, there's people who, who study these things called um, cycles and they say that there's four turnings and we're in the fourth turning now. So I guess I was closer to the first turning back then and uh, so it was a, it was kind of a time of rebirth. It was a kind of a, you know, a, a hopeful time, a happy time, um, a time that maybe many people, um, you know, want us to get back to in terms of uh, the, the, the better qualities of that. As we now are in a fourth turning, which is more of a turmoil, um, it more, it, 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 uh, looks like war, even if it isn't war. And it's a purging where, you know, the, the, you know, the, you know, what finally hits the fan and things have to be purged and, you know, crazy wild debts uh, run their course, things kind of run their course. And we get, you know, uh, an ending of things that just got so out of proportion, you know, as to, as you can see now, you know, the rich and the poor, the, this and the, that there, things are so far out of whack. And uh, we're at the end where, you know, those things, the, the time of reckoning, it's kind of a time of reckoning. And so quite a long time ago, I remember uh, a magazine called Cadence, and they looked at what Jazz for Peace was doing, and they followed it for a little while. And they made a statement that uh, the mission of Jazz for Peace, that the, my mission, it gets more and more pertinent with each day's newspaper headlines. And I think it has something to do with this cycle as we get further and further, uh, the mission of you know what you're standing for and what I've been doing, it becomes more relevant, it becomes more pertinent, and it becomes more necessary um, and important to our world. So Rick, I wanna ask you, when you hear the word peace, what comes to mind for you? Well, for me, uh, it come what it comes to you know really harkens back to a poem I wrote on the morning of 9/11, which I called "Jazz for Peace," and the words just came out naturally. And in that poem, I talk about um, a uh, you know a universal language that music is that you know is a gift for all mankind. But I also talk about how uh, we people in peace and in the arts as well, uh, they're inspired by the past contributions of those that came before. So it, you know, it be, this became an opportunity for me to uh, not only bring out, you know, um, uh, be inspired by all those past contributions, whether it's Gandhi or Martin Luther King or, you know, John Coltrane or all these people that played a role in, you know, uh, the, the uh, you know, peace, the movement of peace, you know, the 1960s. But um, to take it now and go kind of take the baton and run further because these pe great people are no longer with us, uh, but I get to keep running. And what I've done is kind of redefined peace as an opportunity to help our world's most outstanding causes. Because, you know, when you look at peace, um, when you help an outstanding cause, first you identify the outstanding cause. There's so many of them that are not worthy and are polluting that thing. So you have to separate the wheat from the chaff and bring out these ones that are truly dedicated. And you have a you have a level playing field because 
you know, a person like you could be one of the greatest outstanding causes just by having those qualities, not being uh, who you know, but being who you are. And so, you know, anybody can be a great outstanding cause and anybody, uh, someone with a ton of everything that you would think, uh, you know, money and this, that and the other could be the worst, you know, could could not be, em you know, embracing those important qualities. So separating those to find the great ones and then helping them. Not only are you helping them, but you're helping their entire outreach. You know, if they're whatever their mission is and all the people that they're serving with their mission. And that has that's a pathway to peace that keeps reproving itself every day. I love that you say that pathway to peace because we need to find the path in order to serve the peace, you know? Yeah. And it's like you said, like you can know, you can know anyone in the world, but if you're not being true to yourself and you're not living with peace within yourself, how can you spread peace? How can you help with peace? Right. Uh, you know, we really need to identify people that are doing it for the right cause and to bring the right mission and the right statement behind it. So, Rick, I want to get you to play a little tune that just pops in your mind right now. The pathway to peace. What comes to mind? What what's one of your songs that comes to mind for you when you think of the path to peace? OK, well, so here, here's what I'm going to do. Actually, the, uh, you know, just in a crazy uh, turn of events. Uh, I get emails from people all around the world who watch programs like yours and, and all these podcasts that I'm on. And they'll say, hey, you know, I, I feel used. I feel this song when I think of you or I say, I feel this song. What do you think of this or whatever? And they send one. Yesterday, someone contacted me from a farm in the middle of France. Uh, she's from Brazil and I knew her from Brazil. She married someone in France and they have a big farm and she's been watching these podcasts and she calls me from the, you know, contacts me from the farm. You know, I feel this song when I, and she sends me this song and it's a song by Sting uh, called Fields of Gold. And um, it's funny because someone else who was sending me another song, uh, I, I had said, hey, what do you think of this song? And I sent the, the and I just, I just played it a little. And that person said, oh my God, that's, a, I, I think you should play that tomorrow. I said, tomorrow, I just learned it three seconds ago. I said, are you sure? I said, yeah, play it tomorrow. I said, all right, I'll just roll with all this. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of this, okay? Then I'm going to go into a free improvisation on your, the, on your tangent here of Pathways to Peace, thinking of that as a, you know, a, a motif for, and I'm, that's going to lead into the reciting of the Jazz for Peace poem. Okay, sounds good. Go ahead. All right. Will you 
stay with me? Will you be my love upon the fields of barley? We'll forget the sun in his jealous sky as we lie in fields of gold. See the west wind move like a lover so upon the fields of Feel her body rise when you kiss her mouth upon the fields of gold. Never made promises lightly. There have been some that I've broken, but I swear in the days still. Walk in fields of jazz for peace coming through the trees in my heart it fills me like a celebration I see the light and I want to follow inspired by the past contributions of those that came before groundwork for us to build on in this universal language that is a gift for all mankind.
are enlightened by the creativity and artistry It stands for peace and love and humanity. An intelligence that leads to reaching potential that we have in our soul. So we can raise our total conscience and see that the gift of giving is our greatest privilege. I hear jazz for peace. Wow. Thank you so much, Rick. And I just want to take a moment of peace, a few seconds of just quiet, you know, because it's a lot to take in. Uh, I love listening to the notes and the keys as the, the, the jingles and the, the flow of the piano plays. Um, you know, sometimes we just got to slow down and enjoy the music enjoy the 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 tune that comes from each of the keys uh you know for all the listeners and viewers out there i want you to take this tea and i want you to share it with someone who is going through a hard time right now who might be struggling who's full of that rage and anger in them and let's just bring some peace to their hearts and let's just actually share the love not only today on International Peace Day, but also every day of your life. You know, let's lighten those hearts up. And when I asked you to share the path of peace and you played the song Field of Gold, it's the field of the path, the walk, the journey. I, it all aligns. It all falls into place, Rick. And I really want to thank that person, uh, your, your connection in France. Uh, you know, maybe they did some research. Maybe they did some where Miss Liz is going to take this, right? But it's a beautiful flow. It's a beautiful journey. It's a beautiful way of bringing us together today. And I want to thank you, Rick, for doing that through music, because we need to share more music out there. We need to spread music and peace. And I love jazz. We don't share enough jazz out there in the world. You know, it's a, it's a really, it's a genre that is not shared much. We need to bring it back. We need to start sharing jazz out there. So all you radio friends out there, all my disc jockeys and presenters out there, I really want you to reach out to Rick. I want you to really open those doors and I want you to share and bring back the history of jazz. Let's bring it back. Let's open those doors and let's really get those keys playing you know, let's get some jingles going and let's really twist, you know. So, Rick, I want to, I, I had a few questions come in as you were playing. And I, one of the questions was, what do you feel about humanity today? You know, I think there's a lot of, when you get in this situation where we're in now, um, things can sometimes get so backwards that you can literally solve them by just turning them right side up. So that's what's incredible. I think we're getting in a situation now where the problem is not with solutions. We have solutions to many problems that are out there. I can even tell you solutions to problems for people who wanted to know. They just ask me. I can tell you the solution. The problem is with implementation. That's where a lot of the problem is because in order to implement something, you have to acknowledge certain facts. And there are people that are in places where, you know, hey, they're getting that 
pay, they're getting a lofty paycheck or whatever, or whatever it is. And they don't want to move from that, or they don't want to be shifted from that. So they're going to try to block the implementation because they don't want to inconvenience themselves. That's a good point, Rick. Thank you for bringing that up, you know, because people are scared of change. People are scared of being good. It's like we feed on hate. We feed on the negative. Let's start feeding on the positive. Let's start feeding on the good stuff, the peace and the love and all that. Uh, Adam, I do see your comment and no, <laughs> I can't picture you on a saxophone, but you know what? You could always try because I'd, I'd love to see that. Um, I want to really want to thank the listeners out there today for tuning in um, because today is going to be a special day. Today is going to be a day of peace, a day of understanding, a day of teaching, educational awareness, that music is deeply important for humanity. Rick, I feel that you're here for humanity to bring that open door that has been closed to so many because we don't speak of music for peace. But where do we go when we want peace? When we want to try and understand ourselves, we go to the music. So I want you to play me a song now that represents you as a music note that connects with you. Uh, I, I do notice that when you're playing, you close your eyes. And I love that because I know that you're feeling the notes. And I want to give you this time to just share what music means to you through your music. Okay. So this will be another, I guess, spontaneous improvisation like I did in the middle of those other two things. Uh, I call all of these free JA because um, it's, uh, it, it's um, originally these improvisations were, are known in the jazz world as free jazz because you just, you know, make it up and um, you, but you can draw from anything. And um, I, I, uh, was in Haiti and there was a big sign that said, welcome jazz for peace. And it was spelled uh, J A S S leading me to believe that leading me to understand that jazz is actually a misspelled word. It's their word. It's a Creole word and it's spelled J A S S. So now when I took those two letters off that we were misspelling, I had free J A, which was helps me to, uh, you know, stand for things like freedom of speech and um, you know, the importance uh, um, for journalistic integrity. And of course, the situation we were talking about with peace in general, where you have a situation where, you know, sometimes innocent civilians get caught up and they get bombed or something like that. And we need to be able to report on that so that it doesn't happen and these kinds of things. So, uh, so it's called uh, Free JA. Now, one thing I could do that might be interesting, I could take a song from the era that I grew up, where I told you where we're back when we had the middle class, and I could start out with that song and then go into the, the, the theme that we're talking about here of just the note of peace. So I'll try Absolutely. that. This is an old song from the 70s um, mm. that was on the radio when I was a kid. You know, going to junior high school, I would hear this song on the radio. There's a port on a western bay and it serves a hundred ships a day. Lonely sailors pass the time away and talk about their homes. There's a girl in this harbor town and she works laying whiskey down. They say brandy, fetch another round. She serves him whiskey. You're a fine girl, what a good wife you would be. Yeah, my lines could steal a sailor from the sea. Brandy wears a braided chain made of finest silver from the north of Spain. A locket that bears the name of the man that Brandy loved. summer day bringing gifts from far away but it made it clear he couldn't stay the harbor was his home the sailor said brandy you're a fine 
fine girl. What a good wife you would be. But my life, my love, my lady is the sea. Wow. As you're playing those keys, Rick, I could feel the running for freedom, the running the, and, the, and the pulse and then the calmness of freedom. Uh, you know, when you really listen to music, you can really hear the notes speak. You can feel the, the, the rush, the, 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 the fear, the tenseness, you know, and then the lightness. 
of how freedom comes. Uh, Rick, oh my God, like I, I'm a junkie for jazz. If nobody is out there that doesn't know Miss Liz, I love jazz. I love notes. I love music um, because it's a way of expression, uh, you know, and it actually speaks to us when we're listening. So for the listeners and viewers out there, as you listen to these songs this morning and when you shut a replay or, or you're watching the replay, just listen to the notes. Listen to them speak to you. And if you can, close your eyes. I can't close my eyes because I'm broadcasting. I got to watch through all the things that are popping up. But I mean, I'm going to watch the replay of this episode, Rick, and I'm going to close my eyes because I could feel the panic, the fear, the let me out, let me get away. And then you come and you finish it off with a soft twinkle of peace. The lightness, I, it, it's just magical. I really want to just thank you for that. So, Rick, I want to ask you, and I ask this to all my guests, if I give you the word T-E-A, what three words would you give me that start with those letters? Okay. Uh, well, the very first, just, I don't know why, just came to my mouth with, with the T was tenderness. I don't know where tenderness. Um, I would say... The mo one of the most important words in the world begins with the letter E, and that would be empowerment. And then for A, um, I would have to say, hmm, uh, something came to my head now, and I forgot what it was. I, I kept thinking. I just should have just said the first word. But I'll say um, for, for A, I would be... Um, Hmm. Oh, let it. Flow, I was gonna Rick. say all encompassing, but you know, I don't know if that's is that a that would that is that all one word? That's two words, right? That's two words, but that's amazing. Okay, all encompassing. <laughs> now, do you want to share a little bit of why you gave those words? Okay, so you know, I think tenderness is kind of important because it's um. It relates to empathy. It relates to humanity. Um, there's a certain um, forgivingness in there, or a certain uh, a certain like um, soothingness. Um, it's kind of a way of um, it's an action. It's it's an action that is is of good. It's a, it's like a it's like a good action, you know. Um, so that was that word. And then empowerment is extremely important because you, um, you're basically taking someone and giving them the opportunity to fulfill their potential. So that's, what's so important about empowerment. I think one, one, the one situation with the mess that we're in is that we get on a certain tangent, like, let's say, um, you know, a company has a, or, or capitalism in general has a profit motive. So we have a profit motive, but now it starts to get uh, degenerative when you have the board meeting to try to, their, their only role is to try to figure out a way for more profit. Well, they might already have more profits than they can even know what to do with. You know what I mean? Um, the lights are going to be on in their homes for the next 300 years, yet they are stuck where they have to come up with more profit, you know, yes. and now you're looking at, well, we can get more profit if we do this bad thing, if we manipulate people in a wrong way, if we do these things. And now they are degenerating by chasing after profit that is not really necessary for them to, you know, provide their good, to provide something good to the community. And so now they're, now they're distorting and they're, you know what I mean? So, uh, so, so what we need to do is, uh, to counteract that is instead of taking away people's potential by squeezing more profit, you know, squeezing more, uh, water out of a stone or whatever we're doing, uh, instead of taking away people's potential, we really have to, again, reverse it, complete the opposite and come up with opportunities to empower people and help them fulfill their potential instead of constantly suppressing their potential, which is what these activities do. They mm -hmm. might register in terms of their, you know, their, uh, 
duty to increase profit, but look at all the problems that they're causing, you know, um, all encompassing is basically, um, you know, when you look at you, when you take things as a whole, you know, a lot of things now are so simple because of this reverse paradigm that we've reached, you know, you have very simple, uh, things that you can compare to things like, for example, um, a salmon, you know, I like to say a salmon because a salmon is a fish. It swims up river in the wild because of its journey. It is an incredible phenomenon. And, you know, why are there grizzly bears waiting uh, in Alaska for them? Because it's the most nutritious thing on the planet, you know, the most nutritious thing. However, that's the freedom, the wild, you know, the, the something that is still free. Once it becomes captured, Okay. Now you've got a, the complete opposite. You have something that doesn't swim. It's stuck in a pen. The pen is often in polluted waters in Vietnam or somewhere, you know what I mean? And then it's not moving. It's not even in clean water. It's in dirty water. And then to feed it, they get, you know, little pellets out of the Baltic Sea, which all these, um, all these countries that surround it have already just gave up on and said, hey, we can't, there's no way we, you know, doing our commerce that it's not going to be polluted. So we won't let people eat that. But now they fish it and make pellets, give the polluted pellets to the, to the, and then they have to throw um, a powder into that pen to hold their rancid bodies together before they harvest them and put them. So now you have the most unnutritious potentially food. So you've gone from last place to first place. So what we have now in the world is everything is kind of captured. You know, you have big nonprofits, giant multi-million billion dollar nonprofits. And you'll notice just by looking at them, their mission, let's say their mission is to clean the ocean, but the ocean keeps getting worse and worse and worse every year. Well, why is that? Because they're a captured entity. They're captured by their funder, who is the polluter. So the polluter is funding the person that's supposed to clean it. So what are you know? So you've got this captured situation. So no wonder it's getting more polluted instead of more clean, you know, or whatever it is. The opposite is what's happening. So you have you have when you have something captured. So when you look at the big picture, the all-encompassing picture, you see the huge difference between that which is not captured and that which is captured, and how far away it is. You know what I mean? So you know you might love something in its uncaptured state. But in its captured state, all of a sudden, it's not, gee, that doesn't, that's not, that's not what I had in mind at all. You know, all of a sudden, it's almost like, um, you know, my grandfather used to make wine and he would get the grapes from Italy and all. And I loved wine. But then when my grandfather passed away, I didn't like wine because I was tasting wine that was, you know, the worst of the barrel that was being shipped over here from Italy because they didn't want to drink it over there. They knew better. And they sent it to us. And I'm drinking, I'm like, I don't like wine. I, I thought I liked it, but I didn't like it. Well, I thought I, li I liked the wine that they were still keeping over there in Italy for themselves. That, because when I went to Italy to play, I was like, wait a minute, you know? So the, the which was the wine my grandfather made, that you drink that, you like wine. But if you drink what was, you know, in the bar, you didn't like wine. Well, it's the same thing. So we have something, you know, it can be the same thing with anything, you know, like the freedom of jazz in its true form. You might love it, but in a captured form, you might, yeah, this tape, you know, this isn't not what I, you know what I mean? So, so yeah. that's where you get into the all encompassing looking at the big picture. And now again, we're looking at situations that have solutions, but the, the big problem is implementation. Okay. Again, Rick, we, we need to implement, you know, we need to really bring a change and we really need to, the different perspectives. And you gave a good example, the wine from Italy and your grandpa's wine. You know, there are certain things that we enjoy from certain, certain areas, certain people, certain countries. And then there's others that were just like, uh, I don't know if I like this, you know, uh, and we have to be able to vocalize that and we need to be able to say it. And express it, but in a loving way, not in a hateful way. Right. You know, we we need to be able to make changes, but not come as a hardcore. Da 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 da. da this is broken. That's broken. This broken. We're not fixing anything when we're just, we're just stating that it's broken. We already know it's broken. 
We already know the world is breaking. The world is full of corruption. We know that. That's why we bring peace. That's why we promote peace. We bring these international days of peace so that we can share it not only on today. I want everyone out there who's listening and who's sharing these tea times. Peace is an everyday reason to do it. You, you don't need an international day to spread peace and love. You don't need a special category day to drink wine. You know, if you want to do something and it feels good and it brings you hope and love inside your heart, do it. If you know that it's going to change someone else's life, do it. If you know that this tea time is going to change someone's life, share it, you know. Um, and if you want more, ask for it. But don't demand it, you know, because when we start demanding things, then we start getting the hate in there. We start getting the, oh, well you're asking too much from us. You're, you're, you want too much from us. So ask it in a way that is in a loving and giving way. What are you, the barter and trade way? I'm big on barter and trade. If I give you a loaf of bread, you give me three tomatoes. Everyone's eating, everyone's happy, you know? So let's, let's really bring that back. And I want to bring back music. I want us to start using music to express ourselves stop using words and uh you did this wrong you did that wrong you hurt me you use music to express yourself you know it, take a song and take that song and share it with someone that has hurt you or has brought you pain and take the music in the notes and express and release recharge and reflect on life. And I really want to thank you, Rick, for like sharing a good tea because I love when my teas are different because that's what we are. We're all different. We all bring something different to the table. And you can absolutely use two words, three words, four words. It's your tea. It's who you are, Rick. I can't tell you who to be. I can't, ex I can't tell my guests, this is you. You have to share this. You have to give me this word. I, no, I want my guests to feel free and flow nicely and tenderness empowerment and all encompassing is you because that's your music that's how you flow um uh we had a question when you were playing the second song what got you into composing music and how young were you when you first started Rick? sure so i was um i believe i was around six years old when uh oh. On Christmas Eve, I was stay, staying up to try to catch Santa Claus. Uh, I had failed every year previously. I just fell asleep and woke up, and it was Christmas Day. This time, I was trying to stay awake, and I didn't want to get caught because my parents weren't wild about the idea of me trying to catch Santa Claus. So uh, I did notice something come in the door and a big, heavy set guy at the back end of it. And I figured that big, fat guy must be Santa Claus, and he's bringing something big in the door so it couldn't fit in the chimney and whatever. And this is like, I better cut my losses here and go to sleep because I, I got it. Santa came, he brought something big in. I'll find out what it was in the morning. So the next day, there's a piano in the living room and uh, a baby grand piano. And I was like, wow, I mean, Santa went really. I mean, he could have, you know... He could have done so many other things except bring this giant thing into the house. I better figure out what this is after all the sacrifice he made. I mean, you know, with the chimney and he didn't come through. He had to come in the door. So I start messing around and that's where it kind of started. But I was trying to learn it on my own. And that's where the improvisation came in and the compositional aspect of, of it came in because I was just I, I was just playing my own notes right from the get go. So then I started studying, you know, uh, I, I basically I was doing it on the sly, but someone told on me or somehow my mother found out and I ended up in, in piano lessons. So now I had two things that I had to deal with. I had to deal with my lesson and I still had to deal with my own personal exploration from day one that I was still on that journey trying to figure it out on my own. And then one thing led to another. And the next thing you know, um, I had to quit the only job I ever had, which was a paper boy, because my musical situation had gotten out of hand. I was playing in the uh, homeroom teacher's uh, son's band for the school dances. I was in a grown-up band sneaking me in and out of the, you know, banquet halls or whatever to play weddings and private parties and clubs. And then my mother had you know, dumped the uh, church organist job onto me uh, 
I'm, I'm sure figuring that, you know, that would be a good thing for me, which it was. And so with all three of those, I, I had to give up the paper route. And then basically I've just been, um, you know, it's just been whatever, whatever, you know, it's just, I've been on the road, the, like the, the train has been going down the tracks ever since. <laughs> Rick, before we wrap up, because we're almost at the hour here, I want to talk to you because I do know that when you go on your website, uh, you have the Jazz for Peace and you have the roots and the branches and all of that. I want you to share really quickly before we run out of time on how people can find out more about that and what exactly entitles the grants. Because you have been, you have given out so much grants. Right. Um, you've given out 850 grants have been awarded. Uh, you, United Nations has sponsored an international award for one of one of the causes. So I want to get into that really quickly before we wrap up. And then I want to end up with you playing a, a last song. For OK, us. absolutely. So basically um, what it is, is that it's based on the model of a tree and that that E in the word T for empowerment. It's called an empowerment grant and therefore it's called an empowerment tree. And it's a whole bunch of things that an outstanding cause needs, um, funds being only one of those branches. And so that's what's been so successful about what we do is that we don't just you know, throw somebody money and basically enslave them because they spend it and they have to come back to us every year. And if they and if we don't help them out the next year, their services die. Rather than do that, we empower them with a world class cultural event at no cost to you, plus the staffing and the guidance and the expertise to make that event a success. So in through the process of making that event a success, it starts with you the outstanding cause or the person who is interested. And basically your knowledge starts it off. So what we ask you to do is watch this show. For example, if you're in Ireland or somewhere that we haven't been yet, we've been nine times to Africa. So Africa's, if it was a soccer game, it'd be Africa nine, Ireland zero, which is not, not the right, something's wrong with that picture. So now if let's say you're in Ireland and you're watching the show, great, you're getting information. You might want to now, you know, just explore some other information. You could go, uh, you know, you could go Rick Delarada famous quote on uh, you on Google and it would open up a, a famous quote that I said once or anything, just some other information. And then ba once you're comfortable and you have some information, you could send it over. It could even just be from this. Hey, I, I heard your music and I, well, I heard you do this thing. And you just send your comment to Jazz for Peace. A comment represents a seedling that, you know, falls from the sky. So there's your comment. From that comment, now we have a little teeny seedling. No one would believe that all, this great event is going to grow from that little seedling, except guess what? A tree grows from a seedling, so why can't this, right? So now we have this little seedling. What do we want to do? We want to grow it to roots. So to get that to roots, we now create a little one page about what we're trying to do. Hey, we've got this outstanding cause in Ireland, uh, blah, blah, blah. They've been doing this great work. We want to now bring the first historic jazz for peace event to Ireland to help this outstanding cause, whatever it says. And then it has their little quote. This is what I think. And then it says, what do you think? And send me your comment. So the other board members or the other supporters or whoever it is that they want to share that with now sends their comment. in. and guess what? Those comments grow it to roots. So now we have the roots. Now we're almost there. All we have to do is expand those roots because when you see a tree in the ground, it's a wide, it's an amazing maze of, you know, it's expanded. So all those little teeny roots, you know? So what we do is we look at those comments together with the organization and we say, hey, wow, that person, you know, what, because we have some links they can follow. They were really blown away. They might want to share it with some of their friends or some of their, you know, sometimes you have a, you bowl, you go bowling on Wednesday. You'd love for them to know about the cause, but you can't tell them you're in between strikes and spares. You know what I mean? You can't explain it to them. Hey, I'll invite you as a VIP to guest of honor to this event. Oh, wow. That sounds like a deal. And now they'll come and learn about your cause and be a part of it going forward. So they, a, a bunch, a few of them become like a VIP committee. They do the same thing he did. They take the letter and they show it to their friends and family or people. And now we've got all these little VIP lists. Those additional VIP lists, we already have one with that person who gave his comment. He makes a VIP list, but now we've got like seven or eight and we've got all those 
you know, those people are all VIP guests of honor at this event. So they literally feel like they got paid to come because they're the ones who get all the sponsor, you know, goodies. They get all of the, the VIP meet and greet at the very beginning, all these kinds of, you know, things. So now we've got a confirmed event with this with these roots, we have a confirmed event, just like you have a confirmed tree with all those roots in the ground. You're going to get a tree. We're going to get any, we have an event. So now the tree can start to grow. And now with a confirmed event in Dublin, Ireland or somewhere, we can go after first and foremost, local business sponsors, because every outstanding cause needs sponsors at the local level in their community. I can't even tell you how many times I've gone to a, you know, a, a, a business in that town and they're like, oh my God, they're, they're, they're three blocks away. I had no idea. Well, now, you know, we're telling you, look at the great work they're doing. Get on board. Great. I'd love to get on board. Well, cause, cause they'd love to, these are potential customers for them, for all these businesses, you know, this, all these people, this, these roots, these are, these are, so they're delighted to sponsor this event. And so we get local sponsors. Now from there, guess what we can do? There's a buzz in the community. Now we can go for publicity and awareness. And, you know, the radio stations, oh, Rick's going to come to Ireland. He's going to, he's going to come on our show. He'll come. Yeah, I'll go on your show. He's going to play on our show, play it too. He's going to talk about that, you know, all that stuff. So we go, that's their publicity and awareness. Could be in print. It could be any which way. Publicity and awareness is a valid branch and we want to grow it as big or as small as it, whatever it, it ends up being is, you know, it is sometimes it's small, sometimes massive. We just don't know until we grow the tree. All trees are unique. Now we've got that branch. Well, what's next? You know, well, now to be honest with you, we can go to other things like major corporate sponsors. We can also go to new and prestigious supporters and we can go to other fundraising techniques that often happen at the confirmed event status. Why is that branch important? Because Jazz for Peace has worked with all of the great nonprofits. And you might not, you'd have to talk to them all individually to get their fundraising secrets. And they're not going to tell you, you know, they're, they're not gonna tell. but we work with them. We have a lot of techniques and stuff that we can share and bounce off of you. Try this, try that. Who knows? You know, sometimes it's this, it's a, uh, this off silent auction, this thing. And of course you have your expertise. Some, some of these organizations have experts so we can work together. And again, let that, let those fundraising techniques, whichever ones are going to work the best go into play as well. Now you've got all these branches and it's just tough. I and mean, when you look at the testimonials now, they make sense when you read the testimony. Oh, I can see why so much good came out of this because all those little things grew to some degree or other. So it's no wonder. So, um, so, so yeah, so, so that's what it is. So Rick, if they'd like to know more about this, they can check out your website. If you'd like to give a shout out for your website so they can check that out. Uh, yeah, and absolutely. if you'd like to know more, they can reach and uh, connect to you. Right. Right. So now the one I was telling you just now that has all the testimonials and stuff like that on it. Um, that's, oh, that's actually, cause I see jazzforpeace.org is right up on the screen and that you, you have, but this one is called jazzforpeace.wordpress.com. And then there's a forward slash and the word about is the exact page that I've been. Yeah. WordPress. Uh, if you go there, you can click on either one, two or three at the top. And, and any of those are great information. You can click on one, and you'll be step one and you'll be at what I've been talking about with all the testimonials from all of it. And people look at this and say, how could it, it's too good to be true. How could, how could so much good come out of this event? Well, I'm telling you, if you're getting, if you are not only getting funds, but you're also becoming more prestigious from that branch, you're becoming more publicized from that branch. You're becoming more sponsored from that branch. You know, once you add up all these things, if you're all of these little things you're getting, you know, you're, you're thanking and rewarding your, 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 uh, your board and your, you know, supporters, you're expanding your donor base. All those little things all by themselves are great. But when you add them all together, it makes up a helpful step forward. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, we're almost at the end. Uh, I would have loved to hear another song, but we're almost at the end. So Rick, any final words for anybody out there that is listening to today's Tea Time? What is your final message? Well, I would like to say that, um, you know, we've got to get started implementing some of these solutions that we have. I have a, there's a, right on now, there's one that says, uh, 
New York City jazz musician solves amazing problem in 50 seconds. It's a 50 second long video. And in the video, all I do is I say, listen, technology, we know it's uh, advancing many things, making things easier and replacing jobs. Great. But you don't have to take all that money and give it to one or two people. You know what I mean? You could take that money and share it with the people that don't have to flip that burger because you have a machine that does it or whatever it is. And that money, some of that money can go to that person so that they can do what their dream, they can, you know, try to explore their dream. You know, when you talked about just the, the, the magic in the world that we have, we're all magical. All of these people, a person that out the, you know, that you never thought of could have an incredible idea to make a difference in his community, for society, for the world. We don't know. Let's get everyone's goals and dreams. Let's find out what they are and let's see if we can get them to actually do that. So we have everybody trying to heal society and, and save the world instead of a couple of CEOs who can't save anything because they are mandated by, they'll get thrown off their board if they don't keep making the world worse and more profitable for them. You know what I mean? So they can't save it, even though you think in your mind, no, they're not going to say, we know they're not going to save it. We, it's all of us that are going to do it. Every single one of us. And here's the answer. You can take some of that money because the person doesn't have to flip the burger. That's generating a profit. Now let's get that person doing his goal, his dream. You can contact Jazz for Peace and we'll try to support it. Secondly, Secondly, you can have a trickle up economy. You don't have to just have trickle down. Trickle down, we know it's in place. It does great if you're, I guess, in Washington, if you get the money first, whatever. But the people getting it last are the ones that have the solutions that are trying to implement them. The people, so we can, and we could have a trickle up economy for them where they get the money first. And Jazz for Peace has those implement has those things in place to help people understand how it works and they could get the money first and when they do their great thing whether it's cleaning a lake or a river or whatever their dream is when they spend that into the world it trickles up so some of these like i said it's just you go from trickle down to trickle up and you do it for philanthropic things specifically only for those really all you need to and now look at all the problems you can solve Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you again, Rick, for joining me today on Tea Time and getting the word out, uh, you know, and we need to really start implementing. We need to start stepping up and making the change. Uh, you know, we need to reverse it. We need to flip it. We need to, you know, that I love your an analogy of the burger because we need to flip it. We, you know, we need to change it. Uh, so I really want to thank you again, Rick, for joining me. Thank you for playing for us today on Tea Time and for listening. All For all the listening audience out there, if you got anything out of this Tea Time today, let me know what you got because I always love the feedback as well. And that's how I can improve and bring, uh, bring you a better, strong tea. And Rick, again, thank you for the tenderness, the empowerment, and the all encompassing because it is a strong cup of tea and i want to thank you for sharing that tea with me today i want to thank all the listeners and viewers out there without you i would not be here and i will see everybody at 3 p.m eastern center time and 7 p.m eastern center time that's right we do three shows on thursday so this afternoon's show will be on relationships and then we're going to be closing up this week with creating consent culture so we're going to be doing a lot of culture, a lot of relationships, a lot of building today. So spread the, spread the tea and just share who you truly are by creating, teaching, educational awareness. Share Ms. Liz's tea with anyone out there that it'll make a difference with. And that's how we do make a difference is when we share the love and peace with everyone. So on that note, I want to wish everybody a happy International Peace Day. And again, thank you, Rick, for joining me today on Tea Time. And I will see everybody back at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the second Tea Time of this week.